The Nippon Foundation Gebco Seabed 2030 project has the ambitious goal of mapping the world's oceans by 2030. The collaboration involves teams from all over the planet. Professor Rob Beeman and his team are mapping the seafloor around Australia. If you compare it against Mars or the Moon, now both Mars and the Moon are 100% mapped from the satellites that we've sent out. 100% of those planetary objects is mapped. But here on the Earth, only 20% of the world's oceans have been mapped. That means there's an awful lot yet to discover. Now here is a classic example. The Coral Sea Marine Park, it's just offshore, it's not far from where I live. And yet, we only really knew, I guess, the detailed shape of the shallow portions of it. The deeper parts of it were a bit of a mystery. And so this voyage has turned this, I call it like a blank canvas, you know, if you're thinking of like a, a painter's blank canvas, that was kind of the picture that we had. But now we've really filled in that picture. The team maps the sea floor using multi-beam sonar, which sends out sound pulses or pings, which bounce off the sea floor and return to the ship. The system calculates the time each pulse takes to return and translates that data into a 3D image. And so as the ship's going along, you build up almost like a three-dimensional carpet of, of soundings, depth soundings. Um, it's quite detailed, and so you end up with this uh, beautiful three-dimensional shape of the seafloor. As long as the ship is moving forward, that picture just builds up and up. The coral has managed to keep growing. Ultimately, you end up with something that's nearly a kilometre high. But because parts of it have actually collapsed, we've been able to look in, like an X-ray layer, looking at all these rock layers built up through time. And so it's quite exciting to put the camera there and fly it, you know, up that one kilometre high coral reef. As well as mapping the sea floor, they also send down a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, known as Sebastian, with other images in mind. It's a remote operated vehicle. It's tethered to the surface, so it actually has a cable running up to the surface, a fibre optic cable. It has up to 10 cameras. But the beauty of having the 10 cameras is, I think they had 27 monitors inside the ROV operations room. So they had this beautiful, almost 360 degree picture of what was happening around the ROV, and then they could drive it to where it was going. And the vision was so good. I felt like I was standing on the seafloor, just watching the seascape drifting past, and, you know, whatever animals. I just never got tired of it. I was always astounded. Even in places that you thought that might be, you know, I wouldn't say boring, but there was just things that, you know, it might be just sandy seafloor. You know, there might not be a lot of obvious animal life. And then literally a minute later, something would drift into view. So there was just this constant surprise, you know. I'd have just enough time to rush out, grab a cup of tea, come back, and there'd be something amazing drifting into view. A good example of that was, uh, I think it was, it might have been the last dive. There was a Dumbo octopus came into view because a Dumbo octopus is an amazing animal. You know, it's got these beautiful big flappy ear things and they could see it on one of the other cameras. And so, you know, the whole camera was like tilting this way and we just got this beautiful picture of the Dumbo octopus coming into view. And then we just followed it down. The voyage was planned to commence just as COVID-19 travel restrictions were put in place which meant that scientists who would normally be aboard had to come up with a remote system. So we had to figure a way on how to, I guess, manage from shore and be a integral part of a research expedition with no scientists on board. So we had, the, I guess, the technical challenges of being able to communicate with the ship. We also had software that allowed us to look at monitors on board the ship so we could actually see what was being collected in real time. The steep coral atolls provide a habitat for a rich array of life, even at depths of up to one kilometre. We're talking temperatures around four to five degrees Celsius, pitch black, 
it's deep, it's dark, it's cold. And I guess that was surprising too, just how much marine life was down there. How were you able to actually see things at that depth? You need light. It is completely pitch black down there. You needed to turn on these very strong strobes. And of course, there was lots of colour there. All the animals had lots of different colours. It kind of makes you question why nature has created those vibrant colours when there's no light down there. There seems to be a lot of animals that are coloured red in these deeper oceans. You know, there are deep amphipods, crustaceans, some of those Dumbo octopus, a deep, deep red, almost scarlet, almost perfectly red colour. What we do know is red, that wavelength red, is absorbed very, very quickly. One of the really good camouflage colours to use is red. It guarantees that you're going to be completely invisible. But yet, there were plenty of other animals down there with lots of coloration. We saw lots of fish, even in these deeper zones. You know, they had color on them. Quite strange color, like these coffin fish with beautiful yellows and, and purple colors. And, you know, just strange coloration. Some fish were almost mirror-like, like mirror scales. Why is it important to have mapped the world's oceans? What are we going to gain from that knowledge? When you start looking at, you know, you look at the Earth and you understand that seven-tenths of that, that globe is, is underwater. So straight away we can contribute 35,000 square kilometres of brand new seafloor mapping data to that global effort. From the Australia's perspective, we now have, you know, a really good understanding now of uh, the deeper parts, what's living in the deeper parts of the Coral Sea Marine Park. You know, that's a huge benefit to us because, you know, we are the custodians for this part of the world. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.